All right, let's start with a big story that we are tracking at this hour. We're in a major relief to Akhila Ashokan, who also goes by the name Hadia. The Supreme Court of India has today set aside the Kerala High Court's order annulling their marriage to the Muslim man Shafin Jahan, a bench comprising of Chief Justice Deepak Mishra and Justices A.M. Khan Welkar and also D.Y. Chandraju passed the verdict on a plea filed by Shafin Jahan, who had challenged the Kerala High Court's order which had annulled his marriage to Hadia. Now, Akhila had reportedly converted to Islam after marrying Shafin. However, the court also held that the ongoing investigation by the NIA into the matter will continue. The court has said that it has arrived at the decision after speaking to Hadia, who said that she had willingly entered into the wedlock with Shafin Jahan. The Apex Court has also held that the Kerala High Court should not have annulled the marriage between Hadia and Shafin Jahan. Now, earlier this week, Akhila's father had claimed before the Apex Court that his efforts had prevented his daughter from being transported to Syria to be used as a sex slave or a human bomb. All right, now for more on this, we are joined in over the phone line by Rahul Ishwar, who is an author and an activist, and also will also be joined in by our correspondent Jessica Taneja, who's tracking all the developments very closely. But Rahul Ishwar, let me begin with you first. How do you view the fact that the Supreme Court has struck down and set aside effectively the judgment of the Kerala High Court? Sir, one, whenever we discuss Akhila Hadia case, please mm -hmm. remember what Supreme Court Chief Justice Sri Deepak Misra ji said. He right. said this is one of the most complex and complicated cases he has seen in life. Mm -hmm. So that much is the complexity of the case. Right. Second, right. I am happy as an activist who intervened in this case, I am happy that Supreme Court came out with a two-handed verdict, mm -hmm. a very balanced verdict mm -hmm. where Supreme Court on one hand individual liberty of Akhila Hadia, especially on an International Women's Day. At the same point of time, Supreme Court also gave credence to the contentions of Sri Ashokan, where he said there is a pattern of forced conversion. I mm -hmm. don't use the word love jihad, because uh, jihad is a holy word for our Muslim brothers. I don't want to offend their sensibilities. Okay. But at the same point of time, there has been some cases of forced conversions. That's the official position of national. Rekha Sharma too, who when he, she came to Kerala, she said, I don't want to use any religiously loaded word. But some forced conversions are there. That's only a micro minority of cases, but it is okay. a reality in Kerala. So Supreme Court came out with a very crystal clear verdict where the individual liberties have held. At the same point of time, if there is any radicalization, if there is any angle of forced conversion, they can also inquire into it. I believe this is a two-handed verdict, a right. very balanced verdict, and that will uphold the stature of Indian judiciary. Absolutely indeed, Rahul. And also just to probe just a bit more on this. Now, you had met Hadia at the time when she was in her parents' house. Uh, do, you, do you think that there was a possibility that her rights as an individual to choose had actually been curtailed by her family? And that is what has now been struck aside by the Supreme Court. I but I can blame her father Ashogan. Had I been in his place, maybe I would have you know, hit her more. I, I can see right. that. But you no, know, the father, you know, he is an emotional person. He don't uh, consider technicality and legality before going into any activities on uh, you know, his daughter. But I personally told Sri Ashogan that you cannot cross a Lakshmana Rekha. There is a line. You can cajole, you can, you know, you can maybe beat once or twice, but you cannot kick. There is a certain line that even parents have to uh, respect an individual choice. At the end of the day, right. that's the reason why I said I totally empathize with Sri Ashokan. I totally empathize with Srimadhi Purnama. But at the same point of time, uh, I, I believe Supreme Court did a great job by right. having a very balanced verdict. Absolutely indeed. Rahul, do continue to stay on with us. Meanwhile, we're also joined in by Jessica Taneja. Jessica, you've been following this case very, very closely. This, of course, is a landmark verdict that's been delivered on the International Women's Day. The Supreme Court has set aside the verdict of the Kerala High Court, where Kerala High Court had annulled the marriage of Hadia with Shafin Jahan. So what actually now happens in this case? Well, Salih, let's go back to the history a little. Remember, the Kerala High Court had annulled the marriage basis on uh, the Article 226 under the Indian Constitution, and that was a challenge. Let me also take a moment to point out what uh, the two judges from the Kerala High Court, Justice Surinder Mohan and Justice Abraham Matthew, who had made some important yet very pinching uh, sort of observations when it came to giving out that order that had annulled uh, Hadiyas married to Shafin Jahan. Uh, he said, in fact, both the judges made these observations. They said, a girl aged 24 years is weak, 
and vulnerable, mm -hmm. capable of being exploited in many ways. Right. And her marriage being the most important decision in her life can also be taken only with the active involvement of her parents. Now, that is where the whole problem lies. Is a 24-year-old woman, not an adult, to understand to subsequently uh, get uh, converted to any, any other religion without being part of a larger conspiracy of being involved in some Islamist group activities or some terror related activities. This is an important point. As Rahul Ishwar also pointed out, this International Women's Day, Supreme Court has of course given out a very well balanced and a good verdict in, when it comes to upholding the rights of a woman, her liberty, her choices, her right to freedom her right to freedom of expression. So, of course, when all these are taken into consideration, it is important to see what Hadia wanted. And to also point out, Saleh, the Apex mm -hmm. Court also made some observation and said that Hadia came to Supreme Court. I remember standing there when Hadia was there, uh, presented in the Supreme Court. The, the judges, both uh, uh, Chief Justice Deepak Mishra and Justice Chandrasekhar, interacted right. with her to try and understand what Hadia really wants. All of us in this matter are forgetting this is the life of a 24-year-old girl. She wants to do what she wants to do. She wants to marry a Muslim. She wants to marry anybody for any other religion. The court of law cannot stop her. Absolutely, indeed. And also, Jessica, in this case, has now uh, have we heard anything at all from either Hadia or, or her from from her husband, Shafin Jahan, who in fact moved the Supreme Court? demanding is to have his marriage with Hadiya had been annulled. Well, of course, there'll be reactions pouring in, and this is a happy uh, day for Hadiya, and nonetheless. And Saleh, importantly, also to point out the fact that Hadiya was not a party to this case. Right. The woman whose case everybody's talking about, the alleged term love jihad that the Kerala High Court had given it, how hideous or how uh, well, uh, uh, not so balanced a uh, term you being used for a woman who's mm -hmm. exercising her autonomy. Hadia was made a party very late to this case. So of course, she will be very happy uh, at this point of time. But also the Supreme Court has given some sort of uh, caution measure. The Supreme Court says that uh, uh, the NIA can continue their investigation in the criminal aspect, but not in the marriage aspect. So that is an important point. The the sovereignty of uh, uh, of, of an individual, uh, their, their beliefs and their right to liberty and freedom need to be upheld. Absolutely, indeed. Uh, do continue to stay on with us, Jessica. Meanwhile, I'm told that we are joined by Mr. Sanjay Hegde, who is a senior advocate at the Supreme Court. Uh, Mr. Hegde, how do you view this uh, judgment by the Supreme Court, which has annulled uh, set aside, rather, the judgment that had been given by the Kerala High Court earlier. It has, it has announced the Kerala High Court judgment with respect to the Kerala High Court's um, over, um, overturning of Hadia's marriage. In mm -hmm. the petition, the Kerala High Court had dissolved her marriage. Right. The Supreme Court has uh, set right that anomaly because, after all, in a in a marriage between two consenting adults, mm -hmm. no third party has any locus standi. Right. The, a writ petition is a public law remedy. That is, when there is uh, something against the government or you have a grievance against an institution which is amenable to writ jurisdiction, that is when a writ petition is resorted to. The mm -hmm. Kerala High Court in its writ jurisdiction could not have annulled uh, this marriage as uh, more so when neither of the parties, neither the hu husband nor the wife had sought an annulment. Right. It, w it was the father. Mm -hmm. so, uh, this is an important judgment coming in on Women's Day, mm -hmm. which has affirmed the right of uh, all humans in and citizens of India not to have their marriages interfered with right. by no matter who, even if it be a parent, even if it be a father. Nobody else can interfere in your marriage. You know, it's an interesting case here, Mr. Hegde, because it's almost a sort of an unprecedented case because Mr. Ashokan, who is the father of Hadia, he still maintains that Hadia is a vulnerable adult who is quite possible to be influenced by, by people that she meets. Now, in a case such as this, where we are referring to a 24-year-old woman, uh, you know, this, this is almost bizarre that the Kerala High Court had annulled their marriage. Now, in this case, with the Supreme Court having come out and said that the marriage cannot be adult, is a precedent now being set that courts cannot enter into the legality and cannot annul marriages where two consenting adults have got married of their volition. Exactly so, because please look at the anomaly. 
uh, if the Kerala High Court had been upheld, that that would mean that uh, in case my uh, my mother objected to my marriage, she could quite conceivably uh, go to a red court and say, no, this fellow is, uh, is 50 plus years old, but he still doesn't know his mind. Mm-hmm. He, uh, I, I, his, his marriage should be annulled right. as a matter of public policy. That is a ridiculous thing, and I am extremely shocked that a high court in this country right. could even do such a uh, thing. Absolutely, indeed, uh, Mr. Sanjay Hegde. Do continue to stay on with this. Meanwhile, I'm told that we are also joined in by Mr. Minhas Merchant, who is a writer uh, and an author. Mr. Merchant, how do you view this order of the Supreme Court, which has now set aside the previous order of the Kerala High Court, which had annulled the marriage of two adults who had got married of their own volition? Yeah, no, I, I'm quite clear about this. Mm-hmm. Two, two issues. One is freedom of personal choice. Right. Now, there's no question that that supersedes everything else unless there are extenuating circumstances mm-hmm. where the woman in question in a marriage is being harassed, etc., etc. There's violence, extenu- extenuating circumstances. Right. But freedom of choice 99 times out of 100 should supersede everything else. So I completely agree with the first part of the Supreme Court order, mm-hmm. which restores the marriage of Hadia mm-hmm. and her husband. The second part is terrorism. Now, right. we all know that there is a, <clears throat> a serious charge of jihadi terrorism against the husband of Hadia. Mm-hmm. That has been investigated by the NIA for a while, many months, mm-hmm. and that investigation should continue according, right. and quite rightly so, according to the Supreme Court. Fair enough. But Ms. Merchant, do you think in this case of Hadia, you know, in this individual case that her marriage had been politicized by extraneous factors essentially for political gains? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, any sort of um, situation in a country, whether it's a marriage or four judges, um, you know, um, in, in a way coming out against the Chief Justice of India, everything, judge lawyers, death, uh, natural cause, <clears throat> not natural cause, all of these issues are thought to be politicized, particularly in an election year where you've got, you know, three or four big states in elections, Karnataka, April, May, and then three big ones. All right. Of the Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, at this in December, and then looks about next year. So bad to politicize, but inevitable in our charged atmosphere. Inevitable in our charged atmosphere is how you put it. Thank you very much indeed to Minhas Merton, uh, to Sanjay Hegre, and also to Rahul Ishwar, and also to my colleague Jessica Taneja who joined us in the broadcast on this big story where the Supreme Court has now come out and said that what Kerala High Court had done perhaps was not the right thing. It has set aside the judgment of the Kerala High Court and it has said that the annulment of the marriage of Shafin Jahan and Hadia was not the right way to proceed.